Hello there guys, RMP792 here, um, yeah I'm making another short video, um, I had been hoping when I made the last one that I'd be able to not exactly return to regular content, you know, certainly not at the level it was at before, but, you know, just do a little thing every now and then, you know, probably just me talking to camera like this about something that interested me. Um, unfortunately, not long after that, my personal life got very, very complicated again. Um, I don't want to go into, into massive details, but suffice to say, in the space of the last 18 months, I've gone from having four grandparents alive to one. And the one that's left has Alzheimer's. Yeah, so, haven't had a lot of time recently to, you know, run the channel and, and anything like that, so... What I'm going to do is, every so often, and I make no promises about this being a regular thing, I make no timetable promises, it's just going to be when I have something I want to talk about, I'm going to try and put up the odd you know, little piece to camera like this. Um, and it as it's going to be when I have something to talk about. And today I have something to talk about, which is why I'm doing this right now. Um, I want to talk about Final Fantasy XV, because as of about five minutes ago, I have finished Final Fantasy XV. Um, I bought it last week. Um, you know, I happened to be. I, I don't know why I was... Well, I don't know exactly why I was in the mood. Basically, uh, the Final Fantasy prequel film, uh, Kingsglaive, came on Netflix, and I thought, yeah, why not? Uh, watched it, thought it was reasonably you know, enjoyable, and, and it was clearly set up for the game, which was fine, um, and figured... Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I can justify buying this. It's dropped a bit in price now, um, so bought it. And yeah, as I say, it, oh God, the installation was a pain in the neck. But anyway, I'm not here to rant about Microsoft patch download speeds. That that's a rant for another time. Um, so yes, Final Fantasy 15. Um, I enjoyed it overall, um, mostly because I actually. I quite like the characters. It took a little while for them to warm up to me, but you know, they do have a good chemistry, a good camaraderie, and the four of them are are pretty enjoyable and kind of bounce off each other reasonably well. Um so yeah, generally enjoyed it. It does have a lot of problems. Um though actually all of its problems are well, most of its problems are kind of in the second act, and most of them are plot-related, so... Again, general plot-free, spoiler-free impressions at first, and then I'll go into the stuff that's kind of, of hinky at the uh, at the tail end. Uh, the combat is... fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, not a fan of the new... Ma not a fan of the magic system in this game, where they're basically just sort of pre-prepared grenades. Um, you yeah, know, that... that Eh, you know, not terribly interesting. But uh, I quite like the fact that, you know, you've got a squad of four people and you're using them a lot. You know, so most of the time it's just, you know, they'll, you know, throw in damage and, and you know, occasionally they can get some extra abilities that let them weaken the enemies or, or, you know, heal up stuff. And then you've got the techniques which you can call in which are kind of high damage or... Pardon? Or specialist abilities. You know, so Ignis has... Um, the effectively, I'll, I'll probably refer to them as tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3 abilities, depending on how much of the you know, gauge they use up. So he's got the tier 2 ability that basically recalls everybody to him, heals everybody up, and anybody who's um, in danger, so they're in their kind of wounded and, and bleeding out kind of state, uh, gets brought out of that by this ability, and it's a very useful ability to pick up. Yeah, I recommend you get it relatively early on if you can. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, um, that's that's pretty good. It felt like you were working as part of a team. Um, the combat does get kind of messy sometimes. It's particularly dodgy when you're trying to target a specific enemy, and it's a yeah. You know, I appreciate there is a pause wait mode that allows you to actually pause thing, but let's be honest. When you have to go into the options menu to turn that on, I never bothered using it. I, I don't even particularly know how it works relative to the you know more action orientated style. So. Not really going to comment on that, but yes, um, it can be a bit irritating to target specific enemies at specific times, which, yeah. Um, 
you know, that can be a problem sometimes because especially even when you're trying to keep your target on a specific enemy because it's the I'll say for the record I was playing the Xbox One version uh, because you have to hold down uh, one of the bumpers you know that button is not great at being held down for extended periods of time uh, so sometimes you know so person had a swapped uh, the bumper and the trigger so the, the bumper basically brought up the menu for your potions and all that kind of stuff whereas the right trigger was held to actually keep locked on an enemy but you know, it's 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 a console game. Key rebinding is not something they really seem to ever think of, um, which is a pity because again, you know, same goes uh, for the armor gear. You know, tapping both the bumper buttons at the same time. A lot of the time, it didn't seem to take it when I tried to do that, and it was kind of imprecise. So you know, but no, overall, it was you know, it was fine. It was very very flashy, very very showy, and. It, it worked absolutely fine. Uh, it didn't have any sort of hideous difficulty spikes, which some previous Final Fantasy games have had, looking at U13 too. And yes, I have played all three Final Fantasy 13s. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the final boss of 13 2 is sort of a... It's a difficulty spike to the point where I basically had to go back, grind for about three or four hours, and then go back in, in order to actually beat it. Uh, which was kind of yeah, hideously tedious, but hey... What can you do, JRPGs? But anyway, back to uh, back to fifteen. Um, other elements, I like the idea of the regalia. Uh, a lot of customization to it, which I, I really you know I I like customizing cool cars. The main problem with the regalia is driving it is boring. Insofar as you've basically got to stick to roads uh, unless you get the modification that basically turns it into a monster truck, which just looks ridiculous, so I never used that. Uh, which basically meant I spend most of my time just having Ignis ferry me from place to place while I check Twitter for the two minutes or whatever it was that it actually took to get from destination to destination. Uh, barring when I just, you know, paid the 10 gil for uh, fast travel, because why would you not? <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of... You know, so the regalia was a cool idea that was kind of wasted. Um... Um, what else was there? The fishing mini game. Yeah, I did that once, and nope, not doing any more of that. <laughs> you know, so poor Ignis, uh, poor Noctis's fishing skill just sat at two for the, for the entire thing. Uh, the prompto taking photos thing. Yeah, I never. Oh, correction, I took two photos manually. Uh, because I was trying to complete one of the take a photo quests for um, that guy who looks kind of like Hurley from Lost. Um, and I, I was trying to figure out actually how I did that quest, because I was within the bubble of where the quest marker was, and I could see the thing it wanted me to take a photo of, so I thought, okay, maybe I have to do this manually, so I took a couple, and I'm like, no, that didn't work. So I looked around the circle a bit, and oh, there's the spot where it wants me to you know, press A to take a photo. So that that was the only time I ever took manual photos. Um, you know, Ignis Ignis's cooking skills. Some poor artist spent a lot of time on all those different types of food that he sh you know shoves in front of your face, didn't they? Um, because a lot of them looked really good and and actually made me kind of peckish on occasion. So well done that person, um, or well more likely yeah, well done that team. But you know, um, so yeah, that that's you know. It's a nice little addition. It would be nice if it got used even when you're at kind of you know, mo more motel -y rest stops because most of the time I was deliberately kipping at places that gave me the XP boost. Um, so the 1.5 or preferably the times 2 XP. Um, admittedly, the only place I could remember finding with the times 2 XP was the one right by uh, the shore. Uh, and that cost 10 grand a night. <laughs> But, uh, you know, by the late game, when you've got that to throw away, and you're like, yep, that's worth it for the double XP boost, you yeah. So at one point I had something like 30, 37,000 XP to spend, and I was just like, nope, going straight for the two times XP place. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty good. But, yeah, overall it was a positive experience, but now comes the point where I, I talk about the problems. Um... I've heard a lot of rumours that the production of this game was kind of rushed towards the end, insofar as they started work on it back you know, quite a considerable time ago. 
and then they basically um, I wasn't sure if they had to start again or if they just you know ended up undoing a lot of stuff and suffice to say you can tell that this game's production was rushed later on because there's a l pretty much once you get on the boat and head off to whatever that city was called I can't remember um, everything starts to move at a ridiculous pace the weirdly the thing it reminded me of most was Dollhouse and I don't know if you guys have seen Dollhouse it was a uh, Joss Whedon written produced uh, show um, about this sort of secret um, operation that wipes people's brains and then implants them with special skills for special missions and special personalities um, and he basically planned out a five season arc in advance uh, the first season was it was okay it wasn't great um, but, you know, it had promise. Um, and then season two rolled around and the numbers had dropped quite a bit. And he basically got told by the network that he was only going to get, you know, I can't remember how many episodes there are. I think it might be 13, but you know, basically he was only going to get one more season. So he crammed four years worth of you know, plot and change and character development into a season. And you can tell. Because everything happens at a breakneck pace, yeah. Oh, there's one particular character who basically goes through uh, a character arc where she goes from, you know, a bit, a bit sinister, but ultimately looking after her people, to complete bastard, to drunk, to complete bastard again, back to secretly being a good guy the whole time, but has been pretending all this time. And that's over the course of about three or four episodes. And it was clearly intended to run over the course of about three years. Um... Uh -huh. <laughs> So that's what the second half of Final Fantasy XV really, really felt like. There was lots of stuff where the designers had clearly gone, oh, wouldn't this be cool? And then they didn't really have time to implement it properly. You know, one of the big examples I would say would be Ignis. Uh, during the uh, fight where you're attempting to acquire the power of the giant sea snake, um, Ignis gets blinded. And the thing is, you don't see that happen. It basically goes from, you know, we're, okay, we're splitting up. Good luck with the battle, Noct. You know, you go in, you fight the thing, you fight the thing, it's awesome. Um, you get back. Oh, and by the way, Ignis is blind now and has, uh, you know, these these new scars and he's wearing dark glasses as opposed to his original sunglasses, uh, to his original, um, you know, just regular glasses. And you're just like, what? What? What, what happened there? You know, and they kind of throw in like two or three lines of dialogue about what happened. And... It's pretty evident that they probably intended at some point in development for you to see that. Um, whether that would be a short section where you controlled Ignis and he got wounded at the end, or if it was just going to be a, a cutscene, um, you know, where, I don't know, maybe somebody's about to take a shot at Noct and Ignis you know, takes it for him, or, or whatever. Um, and it's pretty clear that they just had to you know, shoehorn that in as quickly as they could because they didn't have time to finish that. Or at least I'm assuming that's what happened anyway, because as I, in the second half, the storytelling gets kind of sloppy and it just goes, you know, plot point, plot point, plot point, plot point, plot point. Um, you know, which also means that things like uh, the loss of the regalia doesn't have the impact it should, because again, they, they rush past it, um, which is a pity because, again, I like, I, I'm a sucker for a cool car and the regalia is a cool car, uh, even if you don't. You know, even if you can't use it enough in gameplay for it to be really fun. Um, and getting really, you know, later on, you know, it's it's things like uh, Luna's death, f uh, figuring out what the hell Arden was. Uh, the implication was that it was basically, you know, effectively a pack of demons inside a guy, but there's only like maybe one or two lines of dialogue that kind of explain what his deal is. There needed to be a lot more to actually let you figure out what the hell was going on. Um, uh, you know, the, the ten-year time jump where Noct basically gets, you know, put in stasis and then it's just like, you know, okay, the world is different now and, and you know, I'm not... Having a ten-year time jump is fine. It's the fact that it goes from ten-year time jump to final battle and there's basically nothing in between. It feels like there should have been a period where you were in that time zone. You know, maybe... You know, because everybody suddenly acquires cool new uh, threads. You know, because they've got their proper Kingsglaive uniforms now. And yes, those look cool. You know, those look really, really good. 
But, you know, in particular, where the hell did Noctis get his father's cloak from? You know, unless somebody's meant to have basically spent ten years making this new stuff, which... Yeah, yeah it, it it feels like there should have been you know, a quest line to, to get that or something along those lines. As I said, it, the other thing it reminds me of is KOTOR 2, where in the original version of KOTOR 2, once you hit Malachor 5, you know, it just kind of stops. There's little bits and pieces of what they intended the ending to be, but that's it. You know, this is a game that's desperately crying out for a director's cut or for an equivalent of KOTOR 2's restored content mod, um, which, you know, put all that stuff back in. Um, so yeah, basically this game is good but feels unfinished. Um, you know, so Luna's, you know, it felt like Luna needed to be in it more uh, for her death to really have you know, emotional resonance. In particular, it feels like they actually needed to properly see each other at least once before the uh, the big punch up. And I don't just mean that bit where you know, she's giving her speech and she sees him in the crowd, and yeah, you know, that's actually a really touching moment. Yeah, I, I genuinely liked that as a moment. Um, and then it's just suddenly, oh, she's dead. It's, you know, that sucks. And then let's talk about the last... Okay, I'm really going spoiler bits here, but um, that final scene, as in the one after the credits, where they walk up to the throne together and... what? Okay, was that a dream? Have they come back from the dead somehow? You know, because, I mean, the whole point was Noct was supposed to die in order to defeat Arden. You know, Luna got stabbed through the guts and suddenly seemed fine. Um, the the whole thing about uh, Luna's brother, you know, because uh, in the Kingslayer film, he tries to put the ring on and it basically ends up burning most of his arm off, which is how come he's got the sort of funky robot arm. Um, winter soldier jokes abound, obviously, um, which is fine. You know, it's, it's fine that he's got a cool robot arm, but... His motivation is all over the place because, again, he's got so little screen time that you can that you're not really sure what's going on with him. Um, uh, they waste uh, what's her name the uh, the mercenary leader who you who accompanies you on all of one quest. You know she's a potentially interesting character, and again, it feels like there's a lot of stuff going on in the background of this game because they didn't have the time or they didn't have the money or whatever it was to actually put it on screen and in the game. Uh, so, yeah. I think that pretty much sums up what I've... You know, sums up my feelings on it. Um, I mean, you know, that, that's 18 minutes of, of just waffling about this, so... So, yeah. Final Fantasy XV. A good game that somebody really should finish at some point. Um, you know, because ultimately the second half is just not terribly satisfying because it moves too quickly for you to appreciate any of the elements. You know, so um, uh, the bit when they're on the train, for example, I spent a lot of that going, wait, hang okay, right. I'm assuming Noctis is hallucinating some of this or, you know, Arden's clearly cocking with his, his perceptions, but why? Um, Shiva turning out to be uh, the, uh, the messenger dog. Where the hell did that come from? Um, you know, there's no kind of hints about that or anything. W you know, what was the deal with those uh, messenger pooches? You know, I know that they were basically meant to be bound to the line of the Oracle, but again, not explained. Um, and yeah, lo lots of niggling little problems. I suspect I'm going to be thinking over this one for a while and just trying to, you know, piece together all the problems. Um, oh, and... In case anybody's wondering, my thoughts on the controversy of the way Cindy dresses? I don't care. I really don't. Yo, know, don't get me wrong, I'm normally the guy who harps on about over sexualization in video games, and granted, she is sexualized in the way she dresses, but I wouldn't particularly say her character is sexualized in any way. Yeah, you know, I mean, it depends how much you're into the southern accent, basically, in that whole southern bell stick, but you know. Yo, know, I. I feel like it should annoy me more than it does, but it, it it's not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. Um, with that said, it would have been nice if she was slightly more of a you know slightly more important in that regard. In that you know most of what she does is just you know give you little quests and, and things like that. It would have been nice to actually see them all 
again, back to the whole um, after the 10-year break thing. You get back, you meet up with um, uh, the kid who's... Oh, what was his name? Can't remember. Doesn't matter. The kid who's now an adult, uh, because, you know, 10 years has passed, and, you know, the, and your main three turn up, and then you're just off. And I was looking around Hammerhead going, so where is she? You know, is she here anywhere? And I couldn't find her. You know, it's it's possible she just wasn't somewhere immediately obvious, and I you know, didn't bother looking hard enough. But you know, it feels like we should have seen her there, and you know, maybe we should have seen some other characters. You know, they mentioned that uh, Iris Iris um, has basically become a hunter in the t in that time, and has been you know actually pretty awesome as a monster slayer. And yeah, I would have liked to have seen her. So yeah, that entire segment feels like you could have really. You know, blown it out, effectively done a second version of the map where it's constantly night, it's swarming with monsters, you know, but there's missions you can do there and, and things like that and, you know, get the get the whole band back together effectively so that they can help in some way for the final you know, the final assault, the final mission and have effectively your final Kingsglaive not just be those three, but be everybody from the adventure just, you know, working together to be awesome because I mean, the King's Glaive in uh, the uh, the animated film beforehand is clearly a reasonable size organization, you know. So having them there and doing cool stuff during the final uh, fight to help you get into um, Insomnia would have been pretty cool. But yeah, um, yeah. As a disappointment is is it started off promising. Um, and then it kind of just petered out, and ultimately that's kind of sad, but it's the way it is. So, yeah, that, I think that's that's all I've got. Um, so yeah, Final Fantasy XV. I don't regret buying it, I don't regret playing it. I mean, you know, 31, 31 hours, something like that, that it, it basically took me to actually do it. So, yeah. Overall, yeah, good game, but with considerable problems, I think is the best way to describe it. So, yeah. So, yeah, my recommendation is basically, yeah, if it's going to, you know, I bought it for about 20 quid. Yeah, perfectly reasonable price to pay for it. Don't have a problem with that. I just really wish that, that you know, they'd finished it before they released it, basically. So... Yeah, that's all I've got. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll hopefully, when I can, you know, squeeze one in, uh, see you in future videos.